Well, the Bank of England last time was very half-hearted in the, in the rate rise. You could see it was being extracted from them forcibly with a, with a pliers, with that anaesthetic, and they already started to talk against it. So I, I would think they give it very little support. With the market expecting growth dynamics in the UK to slow, I think sterling still looks vulnerable. Post the Brexit lows, we traded as low as 118. I see there's some political capital being sought about, you know, how the pound is, is going to fall apart, etc. It doesn't really hold in terms of the chart, because we're at 131. We've had what I'd call a grinding channel recovery since that lows. So that doesn't mean it's buoyant and absolutely uh, full of vigor, but it doesn't belie um, the negativity of the post Brexit lows at 118. Sterling is pricing it in the worst. I think sterling is undervalued relative to economic fundamentals. I think in the long run, the UK can probably achieve a growth rate of about 1.8% relative to 22 inside the EU. That's not the end of the world. It's just a bad economic policy decision. That does not justify the 15% fall in trade rate at sterling since the Brexit vote. The problem is markets are worried about the hard Brexit risk until that risk starts to diminish, which will be the product of progress in the Brexit negotiations, markets will continue to worry a lot about the hard Brexit risk, but when they start to discount that likelihood, sterling can start to move up gradually over time. While inflation has been moving higher, wages will be important. The Bank of England, I think, will be watching these closely for signs of second round effects. If they fail to come through, then I think that will then underline the more gradual approach that we're seeing from the Bank of England.